Now, talking a bunch of mumbo jumbo about the dynamics of revenue and BRI, moving that aside. But I want to get into something a bit more that hits home for me a little bit more and something that's a big hot trend today in the NBA. And that is one of the biggest factors of the NBA, unlike unique to the NFL or other sports. When we think about the NBA, we think about players. We're not just thinking about the work that they put in on the court as athletic specimens that defy all odds. It's also the market and the interest and excitement that they build off the court. And more importantly, the stylish effect that they have on the fashion industry and driving trends in goods and merchandise. So I wanna get into the sneaker market and what that means and how it's really transformed through the NBA unlike no other sport. Remember, when you think about baseball, football, those are hot sports, but they haven't really driven the sneaker market like the NBA. Cats aren't going outside, they aren't going around putting on cleats to go hit up the club. They're not putting on, you know, the same type of apparel that they wear in baseball and football to go out and be seen. Unlike the NBA where you see people wearing their jerseys, wearing um, their shoes, their, um, their shorts, all of it. Whoever you represent, league and or a team and or a player, it's all about big city lights, lights, camera, action, and the fashion. Like That's what it is. And the NBA is no exception. And we've seen that in other areas, but the NBA is really taking advantage of it. And you see some of the biggest brands uh, really drive that. And I got a couple of examples about it. I mean, we think about Supreme, Advisory Board Crystals, Nike, Jordan, Adidas, like all of those brands, they are really driving and depending on um, the performance, the attraction, the lure, the, the fandom around giving players more so than any other sport. Because players are the force to endorse, model, and wear whoever their favorite, uh, whoever their favorite, uh, uh, their represented gear is. And it starts when we're young. I remember when I was a youngster playing ball, it was all about the gear. Hell, we see it all the time. People will wear the gear before they can even play the game because that's the trend. So, let me get into it. You can't say the name, you can't say the word basketball, you can't say the word NBA without saying the word Jordan. And cats today, who weren't even born when Jordan played, rock the Jordan gear. Like, that is a symbol, a definition of what it means indirectly for the NBA. And they're driving a lot of revenue and influence in this space. All the way from Jordan 1s back in, I think, 85, 85 to the current release that's about to come out, the Jordan 35s, it's a big deal. That's a long run. And I'm not even mentioning the retros and the re-retros and the re-re-re-retros. It's exploding. And so that's that one nugget of the, the sneaker, the sneaker market, the gear, is a big attraction for fans. And it really drives fans to watch the game, and to, to, uh, in my opinion. Um, because you can wear it and rock it anywhere you go. Your favorite player, you better believe they're gonna drive the favorite the, the gear that comes along with it. The players in the NBA are their own business in and of themselves. They make the largest portion of their money off the court through their sneaker deals or the apparel deals that they have, but more importantly, it typically is the sneakers. Um, and in most cases, not in most, but a large percentage of cases, players can earn and typically earn more money through those deals than uh, than their actual salary or their revenue in and of itself. So when you think about the history of Jordan, I wanna break down how he single-handedly defined the space that was, beneficiary, that was beneficial to him and beneficial to Nike. People forget, a lot of people forget, Jordan was this close, this close to signing with Adidas. And through his agent having vision and having a, his spidey senses tingling about the impact that Nike could have at the time, because Nike wasn't doing anything in the, in the sport uh, like that previously. In fact, back in the day, my parents, your parents, whoever, were all rocking uh, Converse. Oh, they were rocking the old school uh, gear what that we don't see as popular today. So Nike was a risk. Nike was an unknown. People knew Adidas. Jordan wanted Adidas. But after having David Fall, I believe he influenced his parents to come to the meeting, sit in on the pitch meeting, came in, convinced them that, hey, you should probably check this out. 
like this might be a deal and fast forward walked away with uh with a deal with nike and he was the first to really put nike on a journey that would be unrivaled even to this day and jordan mccain i jordan's the best player in the nba in my book now that's controversial i get it that's cool you have your opinion jordan's the best now jordan made about 90 million dollars in his career 90 million dollars in this summer in his career Today's contracts are upwards of 200, 220 million dollars. And net players who are able to get multiple contracts, they'll skyrocket that number. However, let's not forget that because that deal was so impactful with Nike, six years after retirement, Jordan became the first athlete to net a billion dollars. A billion dollars. Now, I talked about some of the shoe brands. The big ones I'm thinking of, Nike, Jordan, Adidas, okay? And then, Jordan brand is stemmed from the deals with Nike. Jordan brand alone makes up 5% of all of Nike's revenues. 5%. That is crazy. Again, Jordan shoe one through Jordan shoe 35. 5% of Nike's revenues. Now, of course, that includes apparel, shirts, shorts, gear, all of that. I get that. But 5% is a big deal. They own a Jordan brand alone owns 10, 11% of the US shoe market. That's crazy. Again, NBA, basketball, Jordan, Nike, 11% of the shoe market. And who's the biggest influencers? And that's why I'm doing this show to really talk about influence. This is the black community. This is where you see our community drive a lot of the fashion, a lot of the behavior, and vice versa. And it's the players that are really driving a lot of this. No other sport uh, does it like this. The second biggest uh, shoe brand in the world, Nike brand, started in 85. Started the on that journey in 85 through Jordan. It's more than double the size of Adidas this is share in the market. More than double. In 2019 alone, I believe they estimated Jordan made about 145 million in endorsements. That's 2019. He hasn't played in 20 years, 20 plus years. And he's making this type of money and that's how popular this brand is. So that is something to just keep in mind. Now that's just Jordan alone. The brand is expanding, it, it, it has expanded, everybody knows when the Jordans are coming out. I mean that even during the pandemic in Atlanta, the mall had a line out to the, damn near out to the parking lot to get Jordans during the pandemic. That's how popular this is. And these are people who haven't even seen Jordan play in many cases <laughs> who are younger, younger kids. And that's how popular it is. Now, one of the best point guards in the league, CP3 has an endorsement deal uh, that spun off from, uh, from Jordan Brand. You have Russell Westbrook, who signed his deal. One of the players that I think is one of the best players in the league. I think he's underrated. Um, one of the few players to be able to average a triple-double. Uh, damn knew it. Th damn near able to do it in three years. Or uh, do it three times. Quite get the break in terms of landing on the team that was as successful. Yada, yada, yada. The story goes on. You can have your point of view about it. But nonetheless, this is a, a great player. He did a deal with the Jordan brand. And you'll see him adopt many of the other apparel brands that I mentioned uh, earlier. And he's taken off from this. And Jordan, and, and that brand has been able to expand because of that. Now, fast forward, you see the likes of Blake Griffin, Jason Tatum, uh, Zion Williamson, um, who also have all signed. Uh, and then, of course, you see a bunch of other shoe contracts jump into the mix. Um, and internationally, I think, is where it's really starting to become interesting because we all know the famous brands, Nike, Adidas, Jordan, etc. But overseas and international brands have started to uh, gain a foothold and have some growth as well through, why? Not because the shoes are great, because the players are driving that traffic and driving that attention and driving that value. Um, Anta and Li, uh, Li Ning out of China has made players tons of money. Tons and tons of money. Uh, who signed with Anta? Clay Thompson, one of the best shooter, shooters in the NBA. Many probably don't think that because he's on the team with the other great shooter called Steph Curry. But he did a deal, nine, uh, nine million dollar, ten year, uh, nine million, ten years, I believe. Dwayne Wade signed with Li Ning in 2012. That's a 10 year deal, 60 million. And he got equity stake in it. So again, this is an example of a player being able to have some have some influence and have some uh, equity in an enterprise in a business beyond just shutting up and dribble. It's more than that, and I think this is where you're starting to see uh, some of that power come into play. And so he even 
he was even able to get a lifetime contract out of his particular deal. So these are all the types of things why you see companies at a younger and younger age, uh, or at companies targeting players at a younger and younger age. city uh, so I am a LeBron fan by far um, and not just because he wins on the court uh, but you have very few that make it out of where I came from and who gives back and helps build up that community uh, in that market uh, building community centers eight nine community centers um, contributing to a lot of the kids programs um, uh, toys and bikes for kids uh, has a school etc and he's not the only one Steph Curry does a lot, uh, Russell Westbrook does a lot. Most of these players do. And I think that gets overlooked by whether or not we like how they play on the court. 